Over four million people a year visit the Colosseum. It's one of the most visited monuments in Italy, if not the world. You may be wondering, what is this giant monument? Who built it and why? In this video, I'm gonna share the fascinating story of how the megalomaniacal ego of one man led to the construction of one of the most impressive architectural structures ever built. Along the way, I'm gonna be sharing some fun facts with you, such as where we get the word vomit from, why does the Colosseum have holes? And is thumbs up, thumbs down a real thing where gladiators' fates were concerned? To talk about the Colosseum, we have to begin with the infamous Emperor Nero. Nero was Rome's fifth emperor and last in the Julio-Claudian line. Nero Claudius Caesar Augustus Germanicus reigned from 54 CE until his death in 68 CE. Nero was the adopted son of Rome's fourth emperor, Claudius, and when Claudius died in the year 54, Nero ascended to the throne. Much has been written about Emperor Nero, in particular by the ancient Roman historians Tacitus, Suetonius, and Cassius Dio. What was written may or may not be true. After all, history is written by the victors. So it's possible that some of the stories about Nero are a bit exaggerated. But one thing we do know, and the part that's germane to this video, is that after a devastating fire swept through Rome in the year 64 and ruined about seven-tenths of the city, Nero decided to build a giant party palace for himself on the ruined land. Just as an aside, one of the things Nero is famous for is that he fiddled while Rome burned. Some say he even started the fire himself. Neither of these is likely to be true. Fires were common in ancient Rome. This one was particularly bad. Thanks to winds that helped fan it, the fire raged for seven days, subsided for a moment, and then raged for another three days. It tore through 10 out of Rome's 14 districts. After seeing all the devastation, Nero did take steps to help repair the city, but he also looked at the wasteland and thought, that would be a great spot to build a giant party palace, all for me. This house that Nero built was called the Golden House, or Domus Aurea in Latin. In fact, that's what we call it today. I've done a video about it so you can see what it's like to visit it. Nero's Domus Aurea was extravagant and opulent. It used precious materials from across the Roman Empire, and it was all for him. Nero actually had many artistic talents, and his Domus Aurea allowed him to experiment with architectural innovations such as his octagonal room and large windows facing outward. He even had a massive lake created where he alone could float around on a boat and relax. He diverted aqueducts just to bring water to his lake. When the Domus Aurea was completed in the year 68, supposedly Nero walked outside and surveyed his creation and said, at last, I can live like a man. And when he died, his last words supposedly were, what an artist dies in me. With Nero's death, Rome fell into a chaotic year of civil war. This became known as the year of the four emperors. They all just basically kept killing each other until the fourth one stuck. The fourth emperor, the one who managed to stick around, was Emperor Vespasian. He ruled from the year 69 until his death in the year 79. His son Titus succeeded him. Upon Titus' death in the year 81, Titus' brother Domitian became emperor and ruled for another 15 years. These three rulers comprised the Flavian dynasty, and their 27-year rule was long and consequential. Vespasian, and eventually his son Titus, would crush the Jewish rebellion in Judea. You can see a depiction of this on the inside of the Arch of Titus inside of the Roman Forum. And Vespasian, upon taking the throne, said, more or less, all right, enough of all of this unrest and instability. We have got to get rid of all traces of the hated Emperor Nero. Let's issue a Demnatia Memoriae. The phrase Demnatia Memoriae is Latin for damn his memory, and it was a way to try to forget someone and erase them from history. And we all know how that turned out. Anyway, Vespasian said something like, Let's build this giant stadium where we can hold games and the people will be entertained and they'll forget all about the hated Nero and think what a great and generous emperor I am. Vespasian wanted to show the Roman world that he was a man of the people, unlike Nero who had taken all of that land just for himself. And so, on the site of Nero's massive lake, Vespasian ordered that a stadium be built. The project began sometime around the year 72 and was eventually completed after Vespasian's death in around 79 or 80. This huge stadium was called the Flavian Amphitheater, which is still its official name today. But you also know it as the Colosseum. Why? We're coming to that, so keep watching. Hey guys, if you're enjoying this video, would you please go ahead and hit that like button? And while you're at it, please consider subscribing. 
Thank you so much. Now you know why the Colosseum was built, and you know who ordered its construction. But who actually built the Colosseum? After the Romans defeated Judea, they not only brought back spoils of war, they also brought back with them hundreds of thousands of Jewish prisoners of war that they made into slaves. Many of them were put to work building this giant amphitheater. They were put to hard labor, including performing difficult tasks like dragging quarried travertine rock from Tivoli all the way back to Rome. Other more skilled citizens of Rome, like artists, architects, and engineers, were paid to do the more refined work on the Colosseum. A few years after the Colosseum was built, the last emperor of the Flavian dynasty, Domitian, had the higher tiers built and also added the hypogeum, or underground. This is where fighters, gladiators, animals, and prisoners were held before they were brought up onto the arena floor. As you know, you can visit the Hypogeum or Underground today. It's not an easy ticket to get as space is limited and demand is high, but if you can grab one of these tickets, I highly recommend it. If the name of this huge stadium is really the Flavian Amphitheater, then why is it called the Colosseum? When Nero was emperor, he had a massive 100 foot tall bronze statue of himself made. It was modeled after the Colossus of Rhodes. When Vespasian became emperor, he changed the face of this statue so it depicted the sun god Helios. Later, in the year 124, Emperor Hadrian, with the help of 24 elephants, had the statue moved so that it was next to the Colosseum. Where is that statue today? Nobody knows. Considering that it was made of bronze, a precious metal, it's long disappeared. So how do we even know that it was there? One of the best clues we have about events and things in ancient Rome is from coins. There's an excellent coin collection in the Capitoline Museums. This is one of my favorite rooms in this museum, and I love going in there and taking my time and looking for interesting stories on these coins. In Oxford, England, there's a museum called the Ashmolean Museum. It has one of the most extensive coin collections in the world, and it's one of the places where we get so much of our information about what things looked like in ancient Rome. When the statue stood by the amphitheater, it stood on a base, and that base is still there. Most people have no idea about it. In fact, they walk past it and often sit on it and eat and drink, but this was the original base of the statue of Nero, or rather, the Colossus. Yes, the statue was nicknamed Colossus, and this is where the Flavian Amphitheater got its nickname. The word for Colossus in Italian is Colosseo. This is, in fact, the name of the metro stop next to the Colosseum. Obviously, when you visit the Colosseum today, you are literally seeing a shell of its former self. So what did it actually look like when it was built? When you visit the Colosseum, you'll walk through a permanent exhibition there, and you'll see several depictions and models of what the Colosseum once looked like. How big was the Colosseum? Well, it could hold between 50 and 80,000 people. The Colosseum is elliptical and is 189 meters long by 156 meters wide, with a base area of 24,000 square meters and a height of 48 meters. The Colosseum was then, and still is today, the largest of the Roman amphitheaters ever built. Why are there so many holes in the Colosseum? The stadium was built with travertine and tuff, or tufa, local limestone-based stones. As crazy as this sounds, mortar was not used. Iron clamps held the stones together instead. An estimated 200 to 300 tons of iron clamp were used. After the fall of the Roman Empire in the 5th century, all of that iron was pilfered and used for other things, like weaponry. And so now we are left with a lot of holes. Which does beg the question, how is the Colosseum still standing there? I mentioned at the beginning of this video that I would tell you where we got the word vomit from. You might be wondering why the word vomit is associated with the Colosseum, and the first thing that may come to mind is that it could be because all of those people <laughs> were getting sick from watching all of the violence there. But actually, that has nothing to do with it. The word vomit comes from the Latin vomitorium, which means to disgorge. The vomitoria were the passageways that ran along the entire building behind and beneath the seating tiers to help with the flow of spectators. Because of the brilliant Roman engineers who created these vomitoria, the Colosseum could be emptied or filled in 15 minutes. The building was finished in around 79 or 80, and in the year 80, Titus inaugurated the building by holding 100 days of activities. If you visit the Villa Borghese in Rome, you can see original mosaics from ancient Rome that depict some of these gladiator battles and deaths. In the several hundred years of its use, over a million animals and half a million people died inside the Colosseum. Entrance to the games was free. Spectators were given numbered pottery shards as tickets. 
these indicated the appropriate section and row according to their social status. Most Roman women and slaves were at the very top, all the way down to the bottom where the Roman emperors and important people sat right up close to the arena. There were 76 entrances for spectators and they were numbered. You can still see the numbers today on the outside of the Colosseum. Four other entrances were reserved for the emperor and important people like visiting dignitaries, the Vestal Virgins, and patricians. There was a daily schedule of events inside of the Colosseum. In the morning, there were animal shows. Sometimes they were just parades. Other times, they were events called venations, which were elaborate stage sets would be used to replicate a hunting environment. And the Emperor Commodus, portrayed in Ridley Scott's Gladiator movie, was one of the emperors who was said to have enjoyed hunting animals from the comfort of his seat. Sometimes the animal events were called bestiari. This is where gladiators were trained to fight these wild animals. And yet other animal events included condemned prisoners being forced to face animals that would maul them to death. During these games, animals did not always die, but they did most of the time. At noon, there were the executions. In the late afternoon was the most interesting part of the day, which were the gladiator battles. These battles were not always a fight to the death. In fact, many gladiators became famous, sort of like today's sports heroes. The Colosseum Arena had 36 trap doors. These helped with staging some of these elaborate shows. And underneath the arena, there were lifts that brought animals and prisoners up to the floor, making them seem to appear on the arena floor as if by magic. When you visit the main level of the Colosseum and the arena floor, you can see a model of one of these trap doors. And when you visit the underground or hypogeum, you can see a model of one of the elevators that was used to bring up animals or people to the floor. Is it true that the thumbs up meant that the gladiator would live and a thumbs down meant that the gladiator would die? Not quite. Actually, a thumbs up would mean that the gladiator would die because it was a way to say to get the knife out and cut his throat. And a thumb down, or actually it was more uh, horizontal, would mean to sheathe the sword. Is it true that Christian martyrs were fed to lions inside of the Colosseum? Probably not. There's no historical evidence that early Christian martyrs were condemned to be eaten by lions or otherwise executed in the Colosseum purely for their faith. Whether true or not, by now, the Colosseum has become a symbol of Christian martyrdom, and every Easter, the Pope walks the Via Crucis, ending at the Colosseum. Initially, the first Catholic Emperor, Constantine, ordered a stop to the games in the Colosseum, but it didn't quite take. Some sources say that the Gladiator Games ended in the year 404. Other sources indicate that the year was, in fact, 438. It may be that both dates are correct, and it simply took more than one Emperor to really put an end to these games for good. The animal games, on the other hand, didn't end until the year 523, despite a ban on animal sacrifice more than 200 years prior. It simply became too expensive to procure these animals, to house them, to train them, and to put on these elaborate spectacles. Eventually, the building fell into disuse. On several occasions, earthquakes caused part of the building to break and fall, but the Colosseum never was destroyed completely. The detritus from the Colosseum was carried off and used for other buildings around Rome, including St. Peter's Basilica. Despite these indignities, the Colosseum still stands. Good thing, because as the 8th century English monk, the Venerable Bede, once said, as long as the Colosseum stands, Rome shall stand. When the Colosseum falls, Rome will fall. When Rome falls, the world will fall. For more about the Colosseum, I've got lots of pages on the RomeWise website, which I'm linking to in the description below. I'm also linking to my Colosseum playlist on this channel. And for how to get tickets to the Colosseum, check out my video right here.